Hello and welcome to NDTV Profit. It's a time of complex challenges for the Indian economy. At a time like this, some very important issues being addressed by a very important person. Dr. Y.V. Reddy, former governor of the Reserve Bank of India, and of course now the uh, chief of the 14th Finance Commission as well. The book uh, that he has authored and will be released on the 29th uh, is titled Economic Policies in India's Reform Agenda, A New Thinking. Just what we need right now. Dr. Reddy, thank you so much for spending time and congratulations on the new book. Thank you. Nice to see you again. It's always a pleasure. Always a pleasure to see you, sir. So let me ask you a little bit about the book. Uh, you know, you raised some very, very pertinent issues, all of which we'll get to uh, in a minute. Uh, but, you know, this is an important time for the economy. There are lots of complex issues that are being discussed, debated. Was that the backdrop to why you decided to come out with it? No, actually, there are uh, four reasons, I would say. One, the 12-year plan um, of our own country. And uh, I've been following it carefully. Second, incidentally, there is a 12-year plan of China. It's a great education to read the 12th year plan of China. There's a huge difference. The focus on strategy in the 12th year plan of China is quite interesting. Thirdly, the global crisis has resulted in considerable review of economic thinking and definitely review of economic policies. So I thought when you look at all this, now is there something we have to learn as we move along? So let me talk about the new circumstances. And one chapter in the book, and I think it's chapter seven, if I'm not wrong, lists out some of the problems that you see in the economy right now. You talk about growth and output being stalled. You talk about a reduction in domestic savings. You talk about a striking reduction in financial savings. Uh, you talk about inflation persisting at high levels, external sector vulnerabilities, fiscal stress, banking sector to an extent, asset quality. That's a long list of very complex problems, sir. No, first of all, let us accept that we always uh, have had uh, complex problems and that is the nature of an emerging economy, particularly a large economy like India. Uh, the, uh, but we must also recognize that many other countries in the, across the global economy, both advanced and developing, are having their own list of problems. So it is not uh, that our country is unique in having a list of problems. But I think one has to look at the configuration of the problems. And there I find that I feel that the configuration of our problems, despite the good performance relatively in the world, continued good performance, the configuration of the underlying problems is something that we should be seriously concerned. There are not many emerging market economies maintaining our rate of growth which have both current account deficit and fiscal deficit. There has been certain amount of uh, pressure on the uh, exchange rate. And more important, uh, the financial sector, which has a lot of resilience, particularly banking. We are dominated by banking. And so some issues have cropped up. Not, they may not be substantial, but they, they should be a cause for a concern. So if you have the financial sector problem, a fiscal problem, and an external sector problem, uh, that's not a good configuration. So that's why, uh, but that's more in terms of short term. But what I was trying to address in this book is not the short-term problems. But I listed the, listed the short-term problems to es explain how the, 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 the medium-term outlook uh, has to consider the important trade-offs that are involved. In facing the short-term problems, we may take up some solutions uh, for the medium term. We should be conscious of that. So any short-term solutions for short-term problems should always be conscious of the medium-term policies and it should fit into a medium-term strategy. That's the basic, at least the thought process. I don't know how much I expressed. Uh, so, I mean, I can go into the past and talk about whether we made a mistake, but I'm not doing that. I'm talking about the future uh, as things stand right now. Uh, I don't know if this is top in your priority of troubles or problems, but various points in the book, you talk about the current account deficit. In fact, you're saying that we have to have a policy, a cornerstone policy of zero current account deficits. Sir. We are running 5% excess. Some people are saying we may breach 6% in the third quarter. How are you seeing the current current? No, I, I, you see, there, first of all, uh, at the general point of zero current account deficit, uh, in a way, perhaps I exaggerated it uh, in the sense that uh, it's not necessarily zero, but over the medium term, close to it. But uh, and a zero current account deficit uh, will create a debate, and that was partly my intention. But uh, I also had in my mind the data which showed that during five years where we had recorded the maximum growth and very respectable inflation, about close to 9% growth and close to 5% inflation, 
the current account deficit was 0.3 percent of GDP. And if you see our own history, it's not necessary that we have a high current account deficit for high growth. If you see many of the fastest growing economies in the last 20 years, many, I not all, many of them, and they had current account surpluses, not even current account deficit. Yes, there are countries which had large current account deficits, but that was 20 years before. That was the time when official flows dominated. That was the time when FDI dominated. Now they have portfolio flows. So I thought that qualitative difference we have to see. Uh, secondly, I feel that we have to recognize uh, the issue of global imbalances. What is the capacity of the foreign capital uh, to flow to India? Let me give you one broad global picture. With so much of public debt of advanced economies, with so much of public debt of advanced economies, they are going to demand a lot of share in the global capital. Therefore, actually the savings may have to flow uphill from emerging market economies to advanced economies. If that is the general direction of the global capital flow, we have to be conscious of the fact that we have to compete with that. And therefore, and thirdly, given the large economy, inherent strengths of the economy, uh, it should be possible to have a strategy of increasing the domestic savings and domestic investment. By how much? Just by about 3 to 4 percent. So basically you are trying to woo 90 percent of domestic savers and 90 percent, they account for 90 percent. So that is the issue. It's not that we can't, in a particular year, we can't have 5 percent. We can have 5 percent, but that should be cyclical, that should not be structural. So is there a cyclical explanation for full 5 percent? If it is not, then how much is cyclical, how much is structural? Definitely structural also seems to be some element of this. So that, that is my concern, particularly because we are vulnerable for shocks. And in fact, in a way, I can be frank, uh, in the 12th fire plan, I think roughly 2.5% uh, current account deficit for the five years as a whole. And so one we have to see in this uncertain global uh, economic environment, uh, should we plan on that basis or should we say that, um, rather of course the plan also considers some risk, but I think we should debate. Uh, we have moved away from 2% current account deficit as being sustainable. Uh, even if it is 2% average in a particular year, then there's not much headroom. So the debate about the sustainable current account deficit has to be brought back onto the table. That's my limited point. So the debate has actually shifted towards the upper end. People are saying that, you know, maybe in the current environment, given what's happening on exports and external demand, maybe 3.5% is acceptable. So the, the debate has actually gone in the wrong direction. No, it, 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 it may be acceptable, but as I said, you are assuming that uh, it is cyclical. But you look at other countries. There are other countries also which are having their exports. In fact, many other countries were a lot more dependent on exports. What's happened? So all you have to do is take the current, okay, take the list of G20 or take the list of emerging market economies, look at their fiscal deficit, look at their uh, current account deficit, look at where they started five years back and where they are now. That's all I, I feel that that's how we should go about. If you say it's because of global conditions, then there should be a reason why we are more affected by the global conditions than others. If they are, then are we... Uh, I'm not saying we are weak or we are strong. I, it's not easy to come to the conclusion. But all I can say is that given the nature of global economy that is going to come in future, what I call the new... the, the, the emerging or continuing uncertainties in the global economy, the possible new normal in the global economy warrants a review of the sustainable level of current account deficit. Uh, and there we have to recognize that we are not living in our own um, world. We have to compete with other emerging market economies. India's number one news app just got even better. Download NDTV's new app. Fully optimized for retina display. Full screen view. Faster response time. And Sudoku. NDTV's new iPad app. Download now.